China conducted the maiden launch of its Long March 8 rocket from the Wenchang spacecraft launch site on Tuesday, sending five test satellites into a preset orbit. With an overall length of about 50.3 meters, the rocket has a takeoff mass of 356,000 kilograms and a takeoff thrust of about 4,800 kilonewtons. It can lift a maximum payload of 8,400 kilograms to low Earth orbit. The Long March 8 series is part of China's endeavors to develop reusable rockets, potentially lowering mission costs and paving the way towards commercial launch services. The rocket's design was based on technologies developed for previous Long March editions. The two-stage rocket's first stage is based on the Long March 7 rocket, and the second stage is based on the Long March 3 rocket. A planned future launch vehicle variant of the Long March 8 will be partially reusable by featuring a combined recovery of the first stage and the boosters as a single unit. According to Chinese officials, the future Long March 8 rocket's launch cycle will be reduced to 10 days. The Long March 8 is expected to fill a gap in Chinese capabilities by sending satellites to geosynchronous or sun-synchronous orbits, depending on the mission needs. The James Webb Space Telescope has hit another key milestone, paving the way for its launch next year. The James Webb Space Telescope features a huge sunshield designed to protect the telescope by reflecting background heat and light from the sun. In the sunshield's shadow, Webb's innovative technologies and sensitive infrared sensors will allow scientists to observe distant galaxies and study many other intriguing objects in the universe. According to NASA, the Webb team was able to unfold the telescope's sunshield and tension it. The sunshield will undergo the same process in space once launched. Maintaining the sunshield's shape involves a delicate and complicated process. During testing, engineers sent a series of commands to spacecraft hardware that activated 139 actuators, 8 motors, and thousands of other components to unfold and stretch the five membranes of the sunshield into its final taut shape. A challenging part of the test is to unfold the sunshield in Earth's gravity environment, which causes friction. For the launch, the sunshield will be folded up around two sides of the observatory and placed in an Ariane 5 launch vehicle provided by the European Space Agency. The Donald Trump administration in the US has issued a new space policy directive to use nuclear power and propulsion in space. Space nuclear systems power spacecraft for missions where alternative power sources are inadequate, such as too dark environments for solar power or too far away to carry sufficient quantities of chemical fuels. Space nuclear systems include radioisotope power systems and nuclear reactors, used for power, heating, or propulsion. Nuclear systems have been an integral part of the nation's exploration portfolio for decades. For example, several of NASA's robotic explorers, including Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 interstellar probes, have derived their power from radioisotope thermoelectric generators. They transform the heat produced by the radioactive decay of plutonium-238 into electricity. More extensive use of nuclear power and propulsion systems could help that portfolio expand considerably in the near future. The United States will develop capabilities that enable the production of fuel suitable to a range of planetary surface and in-space applications. In support of the directive, NASA and the U.S. Department of Energy will design, fabricate, and test a 10-kilowatt fission surface power system. NASA plans to demonstrate the system on the Moon in the late 2020s, providing power for sustainable lunar surface operations and testing its potential for use on Mars. As per the directive, the U.S. will adhere to principles of safety, security, and sustainability in its development and utilization of space nuclear power and propulsion systems. The Indian Space Research Organization has released the first set of data from the country's Chandrayaan-2 moon mission for the general public. The orbiter, which has completed 16 months around the Moon in lunar orbit, was launched on 22 July 2019 and was inserted into the lunar orbit on August 20. The spacecraft carried eight experiments to address many open questions on lunar science. According to ISRO, all the experiments have been performing well and the data received suggests excellent capability to deliver on the pre-launch promises. The data from seven out of the eight instruments was collected by the Indian Space Science Data Center, where it was prepared for public release. Check out the link in the description to get access to the data. According to ISRO, there is adequate onboard fuel on Chandrayaan-2 to remain operational for about seven years. Recently, an amateur astronomer has spotted a rare comet flying past the Sun. 
This comet was first spotted in satellite data by Thai amateur astronomer Wurichate Boonplot on the NASA-funded SunRuzzer project. The comet was traveling at a velocity of 724,000 km per hour and is about 4.3 million km from the Sun's surface. The comet was around 50 feet in diameter, about the length of a semi-truck. The comet is a crude sunrouser, a family of sun-grousing comets, characterized by orbits taking them extremely close to the sun at perihelion. The comet then disintegrated into dust particles due to intense solar radiation, a few hours before reaching its closest point to the sun. Last week, a new SARS-CoV-2 variant was identified in parts of London and southeast England, where COVID-19 cases were surging. According to the COVID-19 Genomics UK Consortium that sequenced a genome data of the virus and identified it, the new variant has been spreading rapidly over the last four weeks and has now been detected in other parts of the United Kingdom. The new variant could be up to 70% more transmissible than the previous variants. In early December, scientists in the United Kingdom studying COVID-19 observed a sudden spike in cases in parts of the country. They got concerned when genomic analysis revealed a new virus variant, with many mutations occurring together. The UK variant is characterized by 23 mutations, and several of these mutations have resulted in changes in the spike protein of the virus. WHO clarifies that current evidence only supports increased transmissibility, and there is no evidence about disease severity, impact on reinfections, therapeutics, or vaccines.